Good morning. Welcome to our worship service, both online and in person. Let us now in silence prepare our hearts uh, to worship Him. A call to worship this morning is taken from Luke 1, 68 to 69. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Almighty God, blessed be your name forevermore. Thank you for your graceful visitation through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, through his being born into a human race and living among us, so that he can lead and bring us back to your embrace. Thank you for your great salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross for all of us. Thank you that our Lord came to redeem us and set us free from the slavery to sins. Thank you for Christmas, because on this day, you have made yourself visible to us through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can see you, we can touch you, and we can confide in you as our dearest friend and master. Thank you for this great love to us all. So we ask that you come, O Lord and God. Let us adore you. Accept our praises and worship this morning as our Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Let us now invite the worship team to come and lead us in worship. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope uh, this week hasn't been too bad. I know it's getting colder now and drier, so I know I'm feeling that every time I wake up. But I hope uh, today we have the energy to come together just to sing some songs, whether you're here in the sanctuary with us in person or at home watching online. So why don't we stand for those who are here and uh, let's sing some songs. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him. In heaven and nature sing. Can tell 
shall return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' name.
there's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, a lie you won't tear down, coming after me. We'll sing that one more time. There's no shadow you won't light up, a mountain you won't climb up, and coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, and lie you won't tear down, coming after me. And all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And oh, it chases me down, fights till I found, leaves the 99. And I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, You. you may be seated. Greetings to you. Uh, let us just take some time in uh, greeting one another. Right? Let us stand up and go around and uh, do the elbow thingy. Right. Grace and peace to you who are worshipping with us online as well. Very good. Everybody got a signal, <laughs> unspoken signal. Everybody is getting back to their seats. Thank you for your cooperation. Let us continue our worship with our tithes and givings. 
Now the protocol will remain unchanged. There will be no collection of offering. Instead, uh, please put your offering uh, in the envelope provided and drop it off into the little chapel offering box over there as you leave the sanctuary through the side door over here, right? Let us now uh, reflect on the words in Philippians 4.19 as we present our offering to God. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, we acknowledge that you can supply all our needs. Help us to trust you in your provision for our needs as we in faith Give generously to your ministry and for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, a warmest welcome to all who are, wor who are worshipping with us this morning, either in person or online, and especially to those who are joining us for the first time, if there is any, welcome. Uh, to you. Do take note that according to the most up-to-date uh, provincial COVID-19 uh, restriction uh, instruction, face mask is now mandatory for all in-person services and gathering. Now, according to uh, each uh, comfort level and tolerance for risk, we ask that you would sit uh, you know, at a comfortable distance okay, from uh, your neighbour, okay, that is sitting uh, with you, right? Uh, ask that you be respectful uh, of each other uh, comfort level and tolerance. Now, due to the new provincial COVID-19 instruction, Sunday service attendance will now be kept at 65. Now, co-workers and worship personnel are not included. Starting next Sunday, those who wish to attend, um, or I say starting today, okay, those who wish to attend the in-person service must register beforehand by calling the church office or online through our email network. The Christmas celebration night will be held on December 17, that is, that is this coming Friday, from 7.30 to 9 uh, p.m., a light refreshment from 6.45 and a welcoming gift for children will be served. Please note that attendance will be kept at 65. So do register with Sister Kara at the reception table uh, outside at the foyer. And for those who are participating uh, with us online, uh, please refer to the church bulletin for the, for the Zoom uh, link. Now, since the attendance uh, will, not, will be kept due to, due to the COVID-19 situation, our Christmas uh, baptismal services will now be held as follow in two services uh, next Sunday. Okay. First, uh, there will be a joint English and Mandarin uh, service at 9 a.m. Note this is a joint English and Mandarin service. And second, there will be a Cantonese service at the usual 11.35 a.m. The uh, uh, 2021 prayer watch will be, will be held on December the 31st, Friday uh, at uh, 8 p.m. via uh, Zoom. Please refer to the bulletin for the prayer meeting Zoom link. The regular prayer meeting on Tuesday, December 28, will be cancelled. Yeah. All deacons and fellowship leaders are reminded uh, to submit a ministry report for the year 2021 to the church office before the end of the year. Uh, leaders uh, do uh, take note. The Senior Pastoral Search Committee uh, want to uh, thank you all for your prayers and support. Uh, they were able to create an advertisement and it's now uh, posted on uh, Christian uh, newspapers, periodicals and, and 
uh, websites. Continue to pray uh, for the committee and continue to pray that uh, God will bring us the right candidate uh, to serve him uh, in our church. We are now collecting the canned and non-perishable food items for the Master Seed Ministry and other items for the Sanctuary Youth Centre. Uh, please uh, bring your donation item to the church before December 19, that is uh, next Sunday. Do refer to the list of uh, requested items on the, on the uh, collection box from the Sanctuary Youth Centre at the foyer. Thank you uh, uh, in advance for your love and generosity. Also, please take some time to refer to the, to the prayer request of the uh, Baozhong, uh, Baozhong Alliance Church in Taiwan, printed in the bulletin. And remember to pray for them as well. Today, there will be a change, as you can see from the slide, a change from uh, my preaching on the series of 1 Corinthians to now uh, on the Christmas uh, uh, event itself. Today's sermon is entitled, The Power of Love in Christmas. Now, this coming Christmas will be different for many Christians, as it was for last years. Since the start of the pandemic, Many churches and Christians have struggled to make preparation for the Christmas season. New modeling released just last Friday, December the 10th, by the Public Health Agency of Canada suggests the number of COVID-19 cases could increase sharply in the coming weeks as the country grapples with another wave of Delta infections and... Um, the highly uh, transmissible uh, Omicron variant. But there's a lot of uh, ongoing uncertainty in the pandemic. Our province is also bombarded uh, with storms, floodings, and standstill destruction to our transportation highways and network, resulting in the delay or shortages of food and uh, rationing of a gasoline supply. This essentially translates to the stress level and the challenges that we have to face for this coming Christmas season. How can we celebrate the usual Christmas under the present unusual circumstances? How can we resolve the interpersonal conflict? How can we cast out our fears? How can we overcome our anxiety? Or how can we simply enjoy Christmas? The answer lies in the story of Christmas. Love in Christmas is the key that unlocks the four powers that can overcome the challenges we face during these uncertain times of the season. We all need these powers in our lives. The only, thing that, the, the, the only thing is that it is not the power we think we need. We often equate power with control. But what if true power is being not in control, but under the control of a power much greater than ourselves, namely our God. We are not in control. We are under the control of our powerful God. Defined this way, these four powers we need to truly live are first, the power of God with us. Second, the power of God for us. Third, the power of God 
in us and forth the power of God through us. These are the powers God makes freely available to us. However, there's a catch. None can be realized without the element of love. None can be realized without love. Without love, all four powers remain elusive. But through love, all four flourish. Four powers, four powers and one key. And love in Christmas is that key that unlock these four powers. Let us go to the first one, the power of God with us. The power of God with us is found in the incarnation event, found in the first Christmas, where its prophecy was fulfilled. Matthew 1.23 tells us, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Love is the key to the power of God's incarnation. God being with us. The beauty and mystery of the incarnation is splendidly captured in Philippians chapter 2, where Paul says, you know, Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God, a thing to be grabs, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. That's the essence of incarnation. The infinite, eternal God willingly step into the human world, into being a human, being small and fragile and earthbound. God is with us. God now is one of us. The Apostle John writes it in this way in John 1.14. And the Word, referring to Jesus Christ, became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus has moved into our neighbourhood, according to Eugene Peterson's paraphrased version. Jesus has moved into our neighbourhood. Now, if your neighbourhood is Victoria, Jesus has now moved you know, to reside in Victoria. God is with us now. God is one of us now. He is no longer far removed, transcendent and remote, unknowable and untouchable and invisible. But God now become our neighbour, our friend, and someone we can confide in. But what does incarnation mean to us now, some 2,000 over years later? How does that become real to any one of us now? What does it mean to say God is with us if we cannot see Him, if we cannot touch Him, if we cannot talk with Him face to face? What does the incarnation mean if there is no God in the flesh here and now? True love, brothers and sisters, that's what John says in 1 John 4.12. No one has ever seen God if we love one another, God abides in us and His love is perfected in us. John's answer is that God is present with us through love. This is so true. Many people out there are just not convinced of the need to receive Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. You know, if only what makes sense to their minds are presented to them, then what is logical, what is sensible, you know, makes sense to them. Because it did nothing to move their hearts at all. 
But when love is demonstrated in real life to them, they will be drawn nearer to the kingdom of God. God then becomes real. The incarnation stops being an abstract theology, but a living reality instead through the one thing called love. We do not need to wait around to receive love from others before we start to show it to others. We have already received this love through Christ's death on our behalf. We love, John says in 1 John 4, 19, because he first loved us. So if we start loving like Jesus, God will become real to us. It would be as if we have seen God. We would have experienced the power of God with, with us through our love for others. And if God is with us, we would not have fear for anything. So the power of God with us in the incarnation is unlocked through love. Second, the power of God for us. The power of God for us comes through love as well in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection is the linchpin of the Christian story. It is that thing that holds the entire gospel together. The death of Christ is what makes good our salvation. The resurrection of Christ is what authenticates the saving effect of his death. If Christ is not risen, Paul says, we all have believed in vain. The whole Christian story is a sorry hoax, a fairy tale. If Jesus didn't just die, but also triumph over death. The power of God for us comes through the love of our God. Romans 5, it says, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It is also in the first Christmas that the angel appeared to Joseph saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The power of God for us comes through the love of our God in sending his son to be born in order to die. I say that again, to be born in order to die so that he will be the saviour of the world. The power of God for us also comes through the love of our God in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ was resurrected. It happened. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4, but how does it become real to us? How does this objective, objective truth of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ become our personal and living truth? through love, brothers and sisters. 1 John 3.14 says, We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers and sisters, of course. We know we have passed from death to life when we love. Love imparts a tangible experience of the death and resurrection. When we love deeply, the very notion that we are born, we live, we die, and the end of our story on earth becomes increasingly absurd. When we love deeply, 
we awaken to the instinct that, as the writer of Ecclesiastes says, we have eternity in our hearts. We know deep down there is more to it. Love unlocks eternity. Love confirms that we have passed from death to life. Jesus is alive and he is with us and for us because he is the first fruit from the dead. We too will live with him forever. Just as the, just as the power of God with us in the incarnation is unlocked through love, so the power of God for us in Christ's death and resurrection becomes real through love. Now, third, the power of God in us. The power of God in us is found in the conversion and the sanctification of the Christian. And it is also released to us through love. There are two deeply related but clearly distinct dimensions to being a Christian. Oh, there are actually three, but I've only mentioned two. Right? The first is conversion. That is being called out of darkness into light, being released from our captivity to sin into glorious freedom. Some theologian will call this uh, justification. Okay. Our final destination is not hell, but heaven. It is an awesome thing, but it's just the start. It's just the beginning. Conversion is the beginning of our new life in Christ. That's why the Bible calls it being born again. At our conversion, the Spirit of Jesus takes up residence in us. The Spirit of Jesus, or He has another name called the Holy Spirit, takes up residence in us. And it's only possible because of the birth of Jesus on the first Christmas. Then for the rest of our life, there is this command to be cleansed from our sins by the power of the Holy Spirit for Christian living and service. That is the process of sanctification. And you have noticed, if you have not, there are four symbols in our Alliance logo. One of them is the level. And that is the symbol for Jesus being our sanctifier. Jesus basically sanctifies us. Jesus cleans our sin and equips us to live a life of holiness. Conversion is coming to Jesus. Sanctification is becoming like Jesus. I say that again. Conversion is coming to Jesus. Sanctification is becoming like Jesus. Conversion takes place at the instance when we believe in Jesus. Sanctification, on the other hand, takes a lifetime to finish and a daily commitment to move along in. It is walking with God in obedience, in season and out of season, in sorrow and in joy. As we turn more control over to the Holy Spirit, allowing Him to lead, to give words, to reveal, to shape, the, to shape our attitudes, more and more, the Spirit changes us to be like Jesus. It is living an obedient life in Christ. That's what sanctification is. The key, though, is love. The key to unleash this power is love. 
John clarifies that Jesus makes inseparable the life of fruitfulness from the life of obedience. Jesus makes the life of obedience inseparable from the life of love in John 15, 9 to 10, that says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. Or in other version, remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. The obedient life only happens with love. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, that if we possess every other kind of spiritual power, knowledge, gifting, influence, and so on, but if we do not have love, we are basically nothing. It is only noise and commotion. Love alone impels us towards true wholeness and holiness. We simply cannot have a transforming relationship with God, with, with Christ, with the Spirit, without love being the life blood. Pride can make us religious. Guilt can make us moral. Duty can make us decent. But only love can make us holy. Only love can make us look and act and be like Jesus. Just as the power of God with us in the incarnation is unlocked through love, and the power of God for us in Christ's death and resurrection becomes real through love. So the power of God in us, in our conversion and sanctification, becomes effective through love. And lastly, the power of God through us. The power of God through us. There's one last thing. The power of God through us in vocation is released through love. Vocation. Vocation is simply and wonderfully this. God has something for you to do. God has something for you and I to do on this earth. God calls you to it. God wants His sanctifying, transforming life released in a kingdom work. Put plainly, you are called. You all are called. God has already spoken. He addresses you personally. He says, I didn't just make you my own and make you like my son just for an exercise. I have big plans for you. I have an assignment for you to carry out. I want you to spend time with me to know what it is. When you know what it is, I want you to walk with me to accomplish it, to finish it. God in His infinite love doesn't just save us, clean us, and set us aside. He saves us, cleanses us, and employs us for His kingdom. He uses all of us as His instruments for His kingdom. And basically, all vocation leads to the building up of God's kingdom if God calls us to it. What really awakens us to vocation is love. The Apostle Paul telling the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 5.14 about his own call to a costly but rewarding ministry of reconciliation says, the love of, oops, the love of God. Uh, I guess I miss out uh, one slide from here. Anyway, it's from Second Corinthians five fourteen that says, Paul says, the love of Christ controls me, right? The love of Christ controls me. 
In other version, it says, The love of Christ compels me. As we experience more of His love, as we learn to live in it, we get more and more zealous about finishing the assignment God placed on us. Love motivates obedience. Obedience nurtures love. Together, love and obedience produce fruit. God does kingdom work through those who love. Just as the power of God with us in the incarnation is unlocked through love, and the power of God for us in Christ's death and resurrection becomes real through love, and the power of God in us in our conversion and sanctification becomes effective through love. So the power of God through us in vocation or service is released through love. Do you want more of these four powers? God with us, God for us, God in us, and God through us. Love is the key to unlock them. God is with you. God is for you. God is in you. God desires to work through you. That's life to the full. That's abundant life, to use the old King James Version. That's power. Unlock them and continue to proclaim the message of Christmas during these uncertain and challenging times. Allow me to end with this, uh, what I call a sentimental, but I think in this situation is an appropriate song uh, by Hillsong, entitled The Power of Love. Oh, sorry, The Power of Your Love. It says, Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I have found in you. Lord, I have come to know the witnesses I see in me will be stripped away by the power of your love. Hold me close. Okay. There's nothing lovely or you know, kind of thing. It's God's embracing us, right? Hold me close. Let your love surround me. Bring me near. Draw me to your side. You know, this is God you know, with us taking place, right? As I wait, I will rise up like the eagle and I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. And the next stanza says, Lord, unveil my eyes. Let me see you face to face. The knowledge of your love as you live in me. Lord, renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life. Right? God working through us, you know, if we were to submit to his will, for the assignment that he has for you. Um, in living every day by the power of your love, and it goes back to the stanzas, help me close, hold me close, let your love surround me, bring me near, draw me to your side, and as I wait, I will rise up like the eagle, and I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. And the song continues with this echo. Hold me close. You know, bring me near. That we will all rise up like the eagle. His spirit leads us on in the power of his love. Let us pray. Father God, we want to come to you acknowledging our anxiety, perhaps also our fears, Lord, as we approach this uh, Christmas season. 
times are uncertain. You know. Things are not looking good. Some people say there is the gloom and doom you know, of the season as we see the rising numbers of infection. We just do not know when, Lord, this pandemic will end. But we know that we can cast out all these fears. We can overcome all these stresses because of your love. And your love basically unlocks the four powers that will help us through these uncertain times. So we pray and we ask that your power, the power of your love will lead us on. All this we pray in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now invite the worship team to come and lead us in the closing song. Thank you, Pastor Fang, for the message. I regret to inform the congregation that I did not pick Power of Your Love as the final song <laughs> for the response, even though I feel like I should have. But I think this song that I chose as well also has a very powerful meaning. Uh, in the busyness of holidays, in the struggles and stress of final exams for students, for those in relationships, and for those who are learning about parenthood or whatever it may be, or who have been parents for a long time, or for those who feel like they're alone during this season and during this time of gloom. One thing does remain, and it is the never failing love of God. So why don't we rise and sing this final song? Dead is paid. There's 
Receive the benediction. On this Christmas season, may God open your heart to love, your mind to wonders, your ears to life, and your life to the divine presence of God, now and always. Amen. Be seated, please. After a moment of silent prayer and meditation, you may be dismissed.